Uh, today, um, with God's help, I, I want to help us to, to be a light into this world. You know, we, we ask ourselves, how do people come to know Christ? What, what, why would they want to know Christ if they know me? And, and God put something in my heart that if we catch this, folks, that people are going to look at you. They're going to think you're that person that Peter talked about, that peculiar person. And they're going to wonder what in the world is in you that I don't have. And so we're, I'm going to try my best to help you to, find, to be like Jesus today. How's that sound? You want to be like Jesus? Okay. And Jesus was full of joy. We're going to talk about joy today. In Galatians chapter 5, in verse number 22, Paul begins to write about the fruit of the Spirit. This is something that the moment you gave your life to Jesus, God put inside of you. And it's going to grow, and it's going to blossom, and it's going to make a difference in your life and in those around you. And here's what the fruit of the Spirit is. And guys, when I read this list, I want you to know, if you love Jesus, if you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this fruit is inside of you already. Here it is. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Wow, doesn't that sound like a great list? And we're going to be talking about joy today. But there's a scripture in 1 Timothy that I want to read to you. And I wonder, I wonder if we even remember that this verse was in the Bible. Here we go. First, or 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse number 17. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God. Now get this. This is for you and me. But to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Wow. So God has given us some incredible things in life for our enjoyment. 
It almost sounds like God wants us to enjoy life. Are you enjoying life? If you walk out now, I know that you really need this message, okay? So I trust you all had a really good week. I trust that you uh, found something to be joyful about. And if we can just remember what we talked about a couple of weeks ago, that God planted seed in our heart. And the law of the harvest is this. You reap what you sow. So Marsha, a couple of days ago, she planted some, we were at a flea market, she found some tomatoes, uh, tomato plants, uh, about six or eight inches, and she planted those. And then yesterday, I made a huge mistake. She wanted flowers. And I, I was busy doing something, I don't even remember what it was, I'm sure it was important. I took out my wallet, I took out my credit card, and I gave it to Marsha and said, sweetheart, honey bunch. I didn't really say that, but I said, Marsha, get what you want. What's wrong with me? <laughs> so an hour later, she came back. About an hour after that, I said, Marsha, I said, uh, by the way, can, can I have my credit card back? And then she handed me the credit card and the receipt, and she had this grimace on her face, like, and I knew what was coming, man. So I opened, I opened the receipt that I tried really hard not to fall off my chair. And uh, she, she didn't do too bad. But, but you know what? She wanted flowers. So if she wanted flowers, guess what? What did she plant? Flowers. She wanted petunias. So she planted. God wants us to be like Christ. So he planted in us the fruit of the Spirit. It's in you so that we can begin to act like him, that we can reflect him, that petunia is going to be a big petunia, that we are going to be as Christ. We're going to look like him and act like him. And let me ask you this question. Who does your family think you act like? Ooh, that was a good one, wasn't it? That was a zinger right there. So, so let's, let's just consider the word of God here today. We read, I, I give, I give, I've been frustrated the last couple months because I'm reading the scripture about joy. And then I look at my life and I look at Christians around me and I say, ah, oh, there's something not right here. I read from Nehemiah, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Boy, it's a good verse, isn't it? Did you guys used to sing that? The joy of the Lord is my, okay. Um, and then Peter, Peter said, I, when I have Christ, I have joy unspeakable and full of glory. He said, it like wells up inside of you, and I have so much joy. And I read that, and I want that, and I desire that, but I look at me, and I look at the Christians around me, and I said, eh, something missing here. And then Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, the night before he was crucified, he said to his disciples, he said, you remain in me, you stay close to me, and I'm going to put my joy in you so that your joy might be complete. And I see that Jesus wants us to walk in joy, and I look at me and I look at, I'm not going to say you, but I look at Christians, and I'm saying, are we there yet? Because sometimes I think we have the idea that Jesus was always serious. There's the, the, the famous photograph of Jesus kneeling in the garden on the big rock, and he looks like, just doesn't look joyful. I said, nah, I don't know if I want that. We, we think of Jesus turning over the money changers' tables, and we see him calling the, the righteous people a bunch of vipers, and, and we, we see those, those kinds of things, and those happen once in a while. But I'm telling you what, I believe with all my heart, you cannot convince me otherwise, I believe Jesus was the most joyful person that ever walked this planet. How do I know that? Because he said, I'm going to give you my joy, and we're going to, we're going to have it today. It's, it's going to be here. You, you just hang in there. Uh, so what, what, what is joy? Um, I found this definition. I don't know if I found it, if I came up with it. I don't know, but it, it's a good definition. Here's joy. A right feeling in the soul produced by the Holy Spirit as he causes us to see the beauty of Christ in his word and in his world. In other words, when I have the joy of the Lord, I can look at God's word and it's going to refresh me. When I have the joy of the Lord, I can look at the stars and the moon and the rivers and I can just say, wow, God, you made all this. And it's going to do something to me. 
Now, what happens here in John 10.10, 10, listen to this verse. John 10.10, 10, in one verse, it has the devil, and then it has Jesus. The devil, in, in John 10.10, 10, comes only. The words only is really important. The, the devil, the thief, comes only, only to rob, kill, and destroy. What? Everything that God puts in us, the end of the verse says, but Jesus has come to bring everlasting life, which is joy and hope and peace. So when God plants the, the joy, the fruit of the Spirit in me, the devil wants to take it out of me. And there's a war going on inside, and we have to choose. Are we going to listen to my flesh, listen to the devil, or am I going to choose to have the joy of the Lord in my heart? And that's what we're going to be looking at here today. Now, with this in mind, it's going to cause us to lighten up a little bit. Did you ever have anybody tell you, hey, chill? Take a chill pill. As a matter of fact, Marsha, one of these days I'm going to have to let her preach so she can tell on me. But since I have the mic, um, we were at a soccer game yesterday for our grandchild, and, and, and these kids are eight years old. Marsha thought they were 27. And, and she was just getting irritated. I said, Marsha, 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 Marsha. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't as bad as I'm making it. But, but sometimes, you know, stuff happens in life, and we just need to chill out a little bit. Come on, is it really that big? Is it really that important? And we need to not take ourselves so seriously. And God sowed, I'm probably going to hear about that, by the way. God sowed joy in my heart so that no matter what soccer game I'm at, when the baseball guy misses a ball, I can still have the joy of the Lord because the things of this world, they just don't really matter. What matters are eternal things is God. And that I am making an example to my world of Jesus Christ when they see the joy of the Lord inside of me. They're looking. You are Jesus to them. You are saying to them, Jesus is worth following, or you might be saying, I don't want your Jesus, okay? It's the joy of the Lord. It makes a real difference. Now, with this in mind, I don't negate the issues that come up at times. You know, the, the tough times come, and, and, and sometimes we weep, and there's pains of the body, there's pains of the heart, and we go through situations, and we all understand that. But we're not to live in that. The joy of the Lord is going to see us through those times. The joy of the Lord is going to help us to get to the other end. The joy of the Lord helps us to realize that what I'm going through is not going to last forever. And I'm going to make it. I'm going to get through this. We had a word from the Lord this morning, a prophetic word. And within that word, they said, weeping may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. So we have times in our life where we're going through some really difficulties. That's a nighttime, spiritual nighttime. But you just hang in there because joy comes in the morning because God planted the seed of joy inside of you and me. Pretty awesome. So let me just ask, does this mean we're never going to, because of the joy of the Lord, that we're never going to have a bad day? Man, I wish that was the case, but that's not the case. I mean, let's look in the scripture. It was a bad day when Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, wasn't it? But it was a good day when God just tamed that lion and he used that lion for a pillow. That was pretty cool. It was a bad day when the three Hebrew young men were thrown into the fiery furnace. That's a bad day. But it was a good day when Jesus showed up, okay? Took care of that, that all. When Lazarus died, that was a bad day for his sisters, Mary and Martha. And then Jesus raised him from the dead and said, I'm the resurrection and life. And he, ha he, he caused us to focus on heaven, on the future, instead of the, the things we're going through now. Folks, we must be convinced that God planted joy inside of us to navigate us through the hard times of life. And we're going to talk about joy. So let me just ask you a question. Do you remember what happened last Sunday? Wow. <laughs> last Sunday was Mother's Day. But the point I want to get is this. Do you remember, did it rain last Sunday? Yeah. It rained, and then it rained, and then it rained. And the people across the street from us, they didn't realize it, but they had a pond because of the rain. Up in Stark County, we had two inches of rain. And when it rains, my, oh, Marsha, I love you. 
But Marcia grumbles, man, when it rains. She just hates rain. She just hates it. I'm in trouble. Where would you like to go for lunch today? I'll be nice to you. But you know, here's the thing. It, in life, it could rain, it could rain, it could rain, it could rain, but, but it's not going to rain forever. And, and here we are just seven days after that awful rain, and we didn't even remember it rained a couple of days ago. See, it's the joy of the Lord that helps us through the trials of our life. And what we're going through is not going to last forever. But we need the joy of the Lord to help us to navigate through those hard times. And you have the joy in you. Folks, I want you to know I really do love my wife. And I really do respect her. Okay. So, for us, because of that rain last week and the sunshine this week, man, we have seasons. I love seasons. And I told Marcia at the baseball game yesterday, it was just beautiful. We're watching uh, one of our, we had a soccer game yesterday, and there were three baseball games scheduled. It was craziness, okay? Um, but good thing I'm retired as I stand up here. Okay, but, 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 but what we know, what am I even talking about right now? This season, I told Marcia, I said, people flock to move to Ohio because of this beautiful weather. And she just looked at me, you know. But, you know, we have seasons. And, and, and the flowers are coming up. And the trees are beautiful green as we came down here this morning. And birds are chirping and squirrels are climbing up into the bird feeders. Man, it, it, it's craziness. Our neighbor kids are out playing on the trampoline and they're making noise, kid noise. I love kid noises. A motorcycle is going down the road. Vroom, okay? And I just smile and say, that used to be me. Um, Marcia and I got, she has a, a Volkswagen Beetle convertible. And uh, we've been uh, driving that around with the top down this week. Um, I don't like driving it by myself because it's a Volkswagen Beetle. And because it's orange. But man, does she love it. And it fits her. And we just have so much fun in that. We're just enjoying life. It's a, folks, it's a good time. To, it's a great time to be alive. And God made all of this world for us. You know, why in the world? He, he did not have to make this earth so beautiful. He didn't have to make the grass and the flowers and the waterfalls and the mountains and the oceans. He didn't have to do that, but he did because he loves us and he wanted us to enjoy it. And we just read in Timothy that God gave it all to us that we might enjoy it. Folks, are you enjoying life or are you just trying to hang on till Jesus comes? We're supposed to enjoy life. So let me ask you real quickly, somebody out loud, what's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? Who said my wife? <laughs> this guy, man. And I heard kids up here. I was thinking more like, you know, the, the Pacific Ocean or something, okay? But you know what? God made these things for us to enjoy. Psalm 118.24. You know this one. This is the day, help me, the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. What day? This day. This day. Let us rejoice. In other words, some of us, man, it just comes easy, man. We're going through a really great time. Some of us are going to have to dig really deep and, and, and choose to have a joy in the Lord. But either way, we're okay. You know, question is, are, are we so caught up in life that we just forget to live? I hope that's not the case. Does God want me to enjoy life, or am I just supposed to hold on till he comes? You know, I, I don't think so. Is it okay to laugh at myself? Is it okay to, is it okay to tease you? Is it okay for me to tease Marsha? It got quiet in here. Am I allowed to be happy? Can I, can I have a good time with my friends even though I have so many important things to do? Yes, yes, yes. Could we possibly be too serious? Are we possibly too heavy most of the time? Can I go fishing without guilt? Yeah. I like you, man. Keep it coming. <laughs> Can I go shooting without worrying about offending somebody? Can I wash my car on Sunday without somebody driving by thinking I'm sinning? Ooh. Let me give you... 
Let me, let me, by the way, honestly, washing my car is not work for me. Cleaning my garage is not work for me. To me, that is just so relaxing. And if you ever come by and I'm cleaning my garage on Sunday, you don't need to pray for me. You need to say, Lord, thank you that he found a way to relax, okay, because that's a good thing. But I'm telling you what, this, uh, a month or so ago when it was cold, Marcia and I were out at the mall, and we're doing what some of you might do that have a couple years on us. Uh, we were walking the mall, trying to get our, our steps in. And there was a, a pastor friend of mine uh, sitting in the mall, and his wife was getting a manicure. So he was being a good husband, and he went with her, but he was sitting out in the mall. He had his phone handy, and I looked from a distance, and I could see there was text, not texting, but there was writing on, on his phone. And I didn't want to bother him, so we, we walked around, I think it was four times, and, and I didn't say anything to him because I, I knew he, he looked busy. So Marshall and I left the mall. We went to another store. He happened to be, he and his wife, at the other store. He said, Dan, I saw you at the mall walking. I said, yeah, I didn't want to disturb you because I, I, I know, you know you look busy. Here's what he said. I was sitting in the chair, but I was working. He had to justify sitting. He had to justify, I, I, I was sitting, but, but Dan, I want you to know, I was busy. I was working. I just wasn't sitting there. I was being a good steward of my time. And I, we walked away, and I told Marsha, I said, man, 10 months ago, that was me. I can sit now, buddy. But we need to learn how to relax. We need to know how to enjoy the life that God has given us. We need to experience the joy of the Lord because people are watching us and they know you love Jesus, but do they want the Jesus that you're serving? I think yes, okay? The joy of the Lord is really, really important. In Luke chapter 2, it's a Christmas text, but let me read it to you. Verse 10, you'll remember this. The angel said to the shepherds, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And I know that in that text, the joy is because the Savior was born. But let me just put it this way. When Jesus came, joy came. Jesus brings joy. And now as he is ascended into heaven and we accept him as our Savior, he puts the joy of the Lord in us. It's inside of each one of us, the joy of the Lord. So God created us, right? Right. Who do you think created humor? Who do you think created joy? Who do you think created laughter and emotion? Did Jesus ever laugh? Man, absolutely. You know, why do you think children were drawn to him? Could Jesus ever go to the lake without picking up a rock and throwing it in the water? How many of you go to the lake and you pick up a rock and throw it in the water? Why do you think you do that? I think Jesus did that. I really think Jesus did that. I, I just can't imagine he, he didn't do that. Um, you know, when he sat around the fire with his disciples at night, where they just all... Hmm. I think Jesus was sitting around there. Hey, guys, let me tell you about David. Let me tell you about Moses. Oh, man, it's Elijah, man. He, he, he was a crazy one right there. And, and he would just tell the stories. And I could just see the disciples on the edge of their seat just, give me more, give me more, give me more. And Jesus just laughing at, laughing not at them, but laughing with them as he was telling the stories. Folks, we serve a, a, a joyful Savior. We serve someone like that. And why would he tell the disciples on the way to the Garden of Gethsemane that I put my joy in you and your joy will be complete? Why would he say that unless he wanted to fill us with his joy? Wow. Now, I know that fun and joy may not be the same thing. But why would God give us the ability to have fun without allowing us to have fun? And by the way, the Ten Commandments are not to keep us from having fun. The Ten Commandments are there to keep us safe and smart. But fun, what is fun? Uh, this definition, uh, anything you enjoy without compromising your walk with God. You know, so yesterday I mentioned Marcia and I were at a baseball game for our grandson. And, and um, yeah, that was, who was playing that game when we had the kettle corn? Carter or Kyle? Carter. Carter was. I know, we, we had a lot going on yesterday. And Marcia brought some kettle corn. How many of you like kettle corn? Oh, man, that's to die for. That's going to be in heaven, I'm telling you. So she brought it, but I didn't realize she brought it for her. 
So I reach into her bag, because she always brings a bag of tricks, man. She's so good at that. And, and, and I started eating this kettle corn. And she's reaching over, trying to grab some. And finally, she said, can I have the bag? So I'm not very smart. I gave her the bag, and she wouldn't give it back. So, so we're teasing over this thing back and forth, and we're just laughing, and she's slapping me and all this stuff. And, and we don't know what people around us thought, but we're just having fun because God made life to have fun. We're supposed to have fun. We're supposed to enjoy the life of our youth. This is what, what God wants us to do. We're supposed to have a good time. And you can't, you can't convince me that David and Jonathan didn't laugh together. You can't, you can't convince me that Jesus didn't laugh when Peter got out of the boat. I want you to think. Remember the story, the, the, there's a, a, a storm, waves, and all this, and Jesus is walking on the water. The disciples are in the boat, and Peter yells out, Hey, Jesus, if that's really you, ask me to come out in the water, and I'll come out. Jesus said, Come on, man. You can't tell me that Jesus is out there, and when he sees Peter getting his foot over the boat, that Jesus just didn't start laughing like crazy. Said, this guy's nuts. I love this guy. I think he laughed. I think when 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 the whale swallowed Jonah or the large fish, if you want to get technical, and spit him up on the shore, I think God up in heaven just started laughing his head off and said, Man, look at that guy, man. He's covered in seaweed and all kind of stuff. And I, I just think God is fun. Because he put joy in me. He put joy inside of you. And if we're just in the, having the mully grubs all the time, do you guys know what mully grubs are? If we're just down, we're just down all the time. I don't think that pleases the Lord. See, see God not, not only encourages us to have joy, his word says it's good for us. Proverbs 17, verse 22, a cheerful heart is good medicine but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. If I have joy, a cheerful heart, it's a good medicine for me. And it just helps me through my day and through my situations. And then there's Solomon. Oh, my goodness. Let me read this scripture from, from Ecclesiastes, what Solomon had to say. You're going to love this. You're gonna, as soon as I can find it, you're going to love it. Okay, here it is, right here. It says, Then I realized... It is good and proper for, a, I'm, in, I'm in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 18. Then I realize that it is good and proper for a man to eat and drink and to find satisfaction in his toilsome labor under the sun during the few days of his life that God has given him. Let me ask you this. When you're working on a project and it's a hard project and you're putting sweat and tears in that and you're done and you look at it and you say it is good, doesn't it feel good inside? That's a gift that God has given us. But then he goes on to say in verse 19, Moreover, when God gives any man wealth and possessions and enables him to enjoy them, to accept his lot and be happy in his work, this is a gift of God. He seldom reflects on the days of his life because God keeps him occupied with gladness of heart. In other words, the person with the joyful heart, the glad heart, they don't sit and say, well, it's just another Monday. Man, they're enjoying life, the beauty that God has given, given them. They find something every day to be thankful for. Wouldn't it be nice to have a thankful heart? And I think we do. You know, if we're not careful, we're going to find that the ungodly are enjoying life more than we are. And that's a shame. We've been forgiven every sin. We're living without condemnation because there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ. We're living with the knowledge that we're going to heaven soon. And yet sometimes we live like we hate this life. What in the world is wrong with us? Our biggest problem was taken care of on the cross. The biggest thing you will ever, the biggest problem you will ever have, it was sin. And sin was taken care of on the cross. So because Jesus took care of that biggest problem, the joy of the Lord is going to help us through any other problem we're ever going to face in life. It's the joy of the Lord. So God doesn't want us just to be alive. He wants us to enjoy being alive. So let's do that. Let's do it. So we take things too seriously. Man, we have, I, I know someone, they're just afraid every time they answer the phone or they go to the door, somebody is trying to take something from them, trying to sue their socks off. 
They have no peace. There's people that are afraid to breathe that I'm going to get coronavirus. There's people that are just, they're just nervous about everything. And let me just tell you, everything, the worst thing was taken care of on the cross. We're going to be okay. Some people, their default, I'm talking about Christians, is just being unhappy. I'm just unhappy. They choose to be that way. Thank you, sir. And they want, oh boy, they want you to ask them, how you doing today? Because they can't wait to tell you how bad things are. Oh, God help us. I, need, I just want to say, stop. Who's in charge of believers? God is. And Jesus said we're going to have abundant life. And we, we have an understanding that abundant life is when we die and go to heaven. No. Jesus said that abundant life is for now. It's for today. It means now. So are we having fun? You know, some of us you say, man, I'm going to have joy when I go on vacation. Can't wait to go on vacation. Or I'm going to have joy when I get married someday. Ah, oh, you guys not here. I'm going to have joy when I have kids. I'm going to have joy when I go get ice cream. You know, with that mentality, you're never going to have joy because you're saying, I'm going to have joy when. But this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Can I make a confession? I'm not always really good at this. Many years ago, when our boys were young, we were visiting Marcia's parents when they lived down in Florida. So we're having breakfast here at Louisville or up, up, in, Ohio, up, up in Stark County. And uh, on a cereal box, there was a coupon, $5 off SeaWorld. Marcia wanted to take the boys to SeaWorld so bad. Guys, I'm a tightwad. I hate spending money. And, and, and Marcia, she, 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 um, she loves our boys. Didn't matter how much it cost. So, so she wanted to go so badly, and I was concerned, and there was no Google to find out the price. So I said to Marcia, I said, how much do you think these tickets are going to be? It's $5 off, but how much are the tickets? She said, Dan, I assume since they give you $5 off, I assume the tickets are $10 and we get them half price. So we went to Florida. We went to SeaWorld. Happy wife, happy life. We got to the ticket booth. Now, a long time ago. But the tickets were like $25 a piece after the $5 discount. I was mad. I was really mad. I calmed down enough to be, be just upset. And, and, and I was just having a terrible time, and I didn't want to pay it. And we're at the ticket counter, and I said, Marsha, this is way too much money. I can't believe it's this much. I said, how about we just turn around and go home? How do you think that went over? <laughs> didn't go over good, man. Didn't go over good. So we paid the money. We paid $125 to watch some stupid fish jump in the water. I was so upset. I was so upset. All morning, we got there when it opened. All day, I was upset. And finally, after lunch, Marsha had, had found an opportunity to get in my face in a nice way, not so nice way. And she said to me, Dan, grow up. We've already paid the money. They're not going to give us the money back. You might as well just enjoy yourself. Man, that was good advice, wasn't it? About an hour or so later, I calmed down, and I enjoyed the few hours left. And I've been sorry ever since that I was like that because I missed a wonderful day with my kids. An ordained Assemblies of God minister that was just mad. Have you ever been mad? Man, I hope you didn't live in it. I hope you didn't live in it. But this is the day. The problem is I allowed circumstances to dictate my emotions. I allowed a situation to determine how I was going to feel rather than working on my relationship first with God and then realizing, man, I have an incredible family and I'm going to have this memory forever. I blew it. There was one time that I did good. <laughs> one time. Um, 
my, my, my brother Steve and Jeff and I, and we got on our motorcycles and we went to Amish country and we're having dinner. And, and so the six of us, and my brothers are crazy. I'm the calm one. The, my brothers are crazy. And, and we're sitting there in this dining room, and we're laughing. We're just telling stories. We're laughing, laughing, laughing. And I mean, belly gut-wrenching laugh, and everybody in the room was laughing. They didn't know what we were laughing at. They were laughing at us. We weren't trying to draw attention to ourselves. We are just having a good time. And we were stuffed. We were at a buffet, and there's no way we could eat anymore. And I'm just sitting back in my chair, and the, the waitress came up to us and, and said, would you guys like some pie? And I, I, I just said, I said, man, we ate so much, there's no way I could eat another bite. And she said, the pie's included. <laughs> Immediately I said, what kind you got, okay? <laughs> and then once again, we just all started laughing. And, and, and just, just laughing. And, and folks, we just need to laugh because it's the joy of the Lord. Psalm 16, 11. David talking to God, you have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. But you will fill me with joy in your presence. That's not when I die and go to heaven. That is when I'm in the presence of God now, God fills me with joy. Because with Jesus comes joy. How Joyful have you been this week? How joyful are you planning on being this coming week? For the joy of the Lord is our strength. You lose your joy, you lose your strength, you lose your strength, you lose your victory. It's the joy of the Lord, folks. This is not a fake, oh, I'm just faking through. No, this is my relationship with God. It's helping me to get through any situation because I know God's really in charge, and therefore I'm not going to stress over this. I have the joy of the Lord. And people around you are watching, and they want your God because of that. Folks, if you're able, would you stand? Kendra, I'd like you and your team come. They have a real treat for us as we close this service here. But let me just ask a question. How many of you will be honest enough to say you really need the joy of the Lord? Man, I do. How many of you want the joy of the Lord? You know what? You have it. You have it. It's in you. Let it grow. Let it germinate. Let it blossom and change those around you. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful today for your love and your presence. Lord, I thank you today that almost every hand went up in this place that we need, want, desire the joy of the Lord. Lord, I pray that we will get our eyes upon Jesus, that we will see that you are greater than any circumstance and that anything that I'm going through, you're well aware of it. And Lord, you're going to make a way out. That's what you do. Lord, we didn't remember how bad the rain was even a week ago. Lord, you help us through those times. But God, I pray for my brothers and my sisters. I pray for myself, Lord. I need this message. And Lord, that we would understand that you gave us a gift of love and of joy and peace and patience. And Lord, those times that we feel like just cutting us short, it just we just sometimes we just want to feel lousy. God, that you would just calmly tap us on the shoulder and say, hey, it's time to turn around because the joy of the Lord is in you. God, help us to walk in your joy. Help us to walk in your joy. It's as we're in your presence, the joy begins to grow. And I pray, Lord, that each one of us are going to walk in your presence today. And Lord, we thank you. Lord, I don't want the world having more fun than me. I don't want the world enjoying life. Lord, you made this for us, your children. And God, we're going to celebrate life. We're going to celebrate life. And we thank you for it. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.